good news, everyone. There is an Animal Crossing update. As if you people needed more of that game. Anyway, shall we continue? What is this? I am here with Matthew to do a... Gamers 2 Podcast. Huzzah. For the week of April 24th, 2020. We're almost out of April already. Next week, we are out of April. Next week is May when we're recording. It's already been a shit show. Oh, yeah. As far as 2020 is concerned. You know, some people would say we're at the top of the mountain. But, I mean, true reality is we're not even halfway through the year. We're at so. top of some some mountain. A shit mountain. A mountain of shit. Yeah. We're up shit mountain without a paddle, as some would say. And now that we move the desk a little bit, I can't just lean like I used to. <laughs> Oh yeah, I fucked that. I mean, you could swivel it. I, I guess, could, a little bit. but it's not. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I, gotta, I was. I got to get used to new norms because eventually this is gone. Yeah, I figured it would be uh, better than leaning on on your trim and constantly f- fucking it up. It's not good anyway. In the closet, I'm trying to come out of the closet, Nate. Hey man, it's 2020. <laughs> Whatever you gotta do, the. Uh... Anyway, yeah, Gamers 2 Podcast. Yeah, Gamers 2 Podcast. Uh, hopefully, potentially some changes for you guys coming up this year. Maybe within as soon as a month, depending on everything that's going on and Matt and I being locked away from things and now forcing us to look at ourselves and say, how can we do better? How can we be better people? We're going to be <laughs> here for a while if we start that. Uh <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, well, we I have now thought of three more things we need to talk about afterwards, uh, contrary to what we, or uh, addition to what we've already talked about. But yeah, so look forward to whatever those changes might be. You guys might not even notice. Ideal, you notice, but we'll see. Yeah, ideal, you notice. Um, who knows? We'll see. For the future. For the future. For the future of which we come out of this quarantine better than already but there are things matt that are trying to distract me from making us better video games that is true the great distractor well, that's their nickname that's 100 percent their nickname what have they always been known as the great distractor the great distractor the great procrastinator the break the great procrastinating tool of the people of the of the people, the tool for the people, by the people, of the people, to not do anything except play them. World so, Pop- what are the new ones for this week? <laughs> the, new, the new distractions for this week are starting with Matt's favorite at number one: OMG Police Car Chase TV Simulator for the Switch. I teased this one last week, Matt, when I said I already know the number one one that's going to be on this list for you. And guess what? That's that. I don't think it gets better than this, but I lied. It does. So here we go. Help will come tomorrow for the PlayStation, Xbox, and That's Switch. That's what they always say. It never comes. That's There's a Rise Against song about that. Number three, damaged in transit for the Switch. Going along, it sounds like we're going with a uh, courier delivery problem. We had totally reliable delivery service before. Now those guys are trying their best and doing whatever they can. We know that. But this apparently already admits that they damaged something. Number four, hang the kings. For Switch. Let I can get them, behind that one. Let them eat cake. A little different meaning on both sides, but, you know, hey. Uh, number five, Moto GP 20 for the PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. So if you needed a racing game, but you wanted to race on motorcycles, well. Has there ever really been a good motorcycle racing game? I don't know, but I've talked about at least five of them since the year started. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like. Oh, you know what? Uh, what's the one in the arcade? That you sit on? Where, yeah, you actually can sit on the bike and, and race that. That might be like the best one. I don't even know. but the, As not a motorbike racing aficionado. The only game that I can think of that I had fun riding, driving a motorcycle was GTA V. I would say like Saints Row as well. Saints Row 2 I had fun. Because after Saints Row 2, it doesn't matter. You can just jump around the map like a superhero. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, GTA V. I loved, I loved doing multiple bike things. I love doing street bikes or motorcycles or just regular 
pedal bikes. Yep. I loved making people race in the pedal bikes. It was one of the funniest things. I was like, all right, guys, we're doing a bike race. And they're like, all right, cool, bike race. And then everybody's got to pick these <laughs> pedal bikes and try to race downhill on a mountain through them. And it's just, it's a great time. GTA 5, the gift that keeps on giving. That's why that poster hasn't gone away. That poster goes away when the game dies. That might be there indefinitely. Yep. <laughs> that poster may never go down. That poster's only been swapped once, and it got swapped out of a Call of Duty poster because Call of Duty dies every year. So GTA has held its place. That poster needs to disappear, but that's a different discussion. I need to fix that with like a, like the Spider-Man poster downstairs. I need to get one of that quality for there. Maybe you should roll that into the podcast updates. Oh, d- fixing this room can all fall in there. Because I, if if we're truly going back to the podcast updates, I still have two more new releases to tell you about. Don't worry, I'm getting there. <laughs> but to procrastinate on telling you the new releases, I currently only steal you for like one day a week. Mm-hmm. If we start doing some of this stuff, it might go up to like two days a week. Okay. Maybe three of like, hey, if we're together, we're more likely to potentially get it done is my mm-hmm. thought because we, we can at least semi push each other to be like all right look at this or look at this or hey this mm-hmm. and then we could e- much make decisions much easier than trying to sometimes corral each other yeah uh but i know where my limits will stand at a certain point with certain people that i might not be able to steal you because heaven forbid they get almost made for them let's continue <laughs> let's get back on track even though at in uh, 13 minutes and 54 seconds, we'll tangent it again. Number six, Deliver Us the Moon for PlayStation. And number seven, Predator Hunting Grounds for PlayStation and Xbox. Multiple people we know, not that will. Yeah, I say we know. Uh, I've met the majority of them, but no is a very loose term. But Funhouse, a lot of people from Funhouse are in there. Garretson is on it. There's a lot of like old machinima people that are just involved with this game or have are literally working on the game or are taking voice acting roles in it. Sark is in it. Bruce is in it. Funhouse of Elise, Adam, James, I think are all in it. So it's a nice like the OG peeps. It's it's an OG peeps thing, but it's it's when I saw it, like my brain fried a little bit. Because I was like, wait, Sark's the voice of it in it? You're like, like that's not supposed to happen. Right. And then I played this game at PAX. Dewey and I did. Mm-hmm. And I'm hearing these voices in my head, and I'm just like, this is so weird. <laughs> the game actually looks pretty cool. Yeah. We had, uh, when we played it at PAX, I think I talked about it in the PAX episode, we had a deal with, it was me and Dewey and three randoms. So it was me, Dewey, and two others uh, as the team to go find or do whatever we had to do and one of the other randoms one of their friends was predator and our deal was because we made a deal with one of the guys that was the like q wrangler i don't know what you call those people but he's like i want to see something fun for this last game of the day and so we all agreed to do a knife fight Mm -hmm. like predator only gets to use melee we only get to use melee we can shoot anybody else like all the random npcs but like fighting predator it's got to be a knife fight and we almost won like twice but I got shot with lasers by a Predator, so he wasn't playing fair. Of course he wasn't. He wanted to be it's cool. Predator. It's Predator. It's hard. It's hard to put someone in that situation and say, it's, hey. And don't use your tools. You can't use your power. Yeah. Hey, no uh, you know, jumping around, shooting laser beams and freaking lasers at everybody. Freaking lasers on their heads. But yeah, no, it looked. it definitely looks like a fun time out on PC and PlayStation. Epic Game Store. If that's so bad for you, then well, you're. What's out it? Of luck. Is it thirty or more? Is it fifty? Fifty? Shit? Sixty? I, I don't know. It's probably city. <laughs> I mix, said city. Yeah. <laughs> that's a mix between fifty and sixty, and I'm not. <laughs> well, sure I got to be that. right. You know, somewhere is in there. There's probably a T at the end of it. We'll find out. Someone get back to us on that. Yeah. Somebody will get back to us on it. I don't have you know. <laughs> I don't have the technology to get back to us on that. Listen, we start that. We're going to be on this for... We'll be down the rabbit hole. I mean... If we start looking things up, we're going down the rabbit hole. We're going to Beyond Wonderland. That's another reference to a music festival. That one's over my head. It's when you go past the turn for Wonderland when you're going down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. And you come out beyond Wonderland, and that's that. Trippy nonsense with... Rave girls and glow sticks and cocaine. 
probably E, probably ecstasy. Cocaine and ecstasy, probably. Yeah. Probably both. All right. Yep. As we continue. Should we move into the news? We shall. Odds or evens? You got odds. Uh, saying it again, Animal Crossing New Horizons received a big update this week that adds a number of features, including two new businesses and a slate of upcoming seasonal events. The most notable additions are the return of two familiar characters from past games, uh, Leaf and Red. Is that those? Do you, are you familiar with these characters? No? Not, I don't know. Not like, we're not a first name basis, mm-hmm. even though that's the only names I know them by. And mm-hmm. I met them today. So other than that, no. After the update goes live, both characters will regularly show up on Player's Island, hawking their wares. For Leaf, that means a traveling garden shop where he sells things like flower seeds and shrubs. I need a shrubbery. <laughs> and you must cut down the mightiest tree in the forest with a herring. With a herring? Yeah, the the Knights of Knee request you do that with a herring. That's after you bring back a shrubbery and they request another thing. And they tell you to cut down the mightiest tree in the forest with a herring. This is this is needy people. It's Monty Python, man. There's a lot of fish jokes in Monty Python. Red, meanwhile, will continue his tradition of selling art that may or may not be authentic. Aside from the new characters, Nintendo has also outlined the next seasonal events that will happen in-game. Uh, first up is Nature Day, which is running now, April 23rd to May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Uh, May Day Tour will run May 1st to the 7th. International Museum Day is May 18th through the 31st. And Wedding Season is June 1st to the 30th. Take a guess which one of those I won't be participating in. Wedding Season? Good job. <laughs> I, like, won't care. I'll be like, whatever. Go do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Unless you're going to really pay me to do this. I don't care. Just out of spite? I don't know if it's out of spite. As much as I enjoy going to a wedding, and I say enjoy going to weddings because nobody, I think, enjoys <clears throat> going to a wedding. I enjoy just being able to go hang out and sit and talk with a bunch of people that usually I haven't seen in a while. <laughs> but this whole happiness as a couple thing... Yeah. Oh, God. It's disgusting. Terrible. Oh. It's terrible. How could you ever <laughs> let that happen in 2020? <laughs> How dare you? I'm over here dying, choking myself with water. It's because you know you can't blaspheme a wedding after you've been in one. <laughs> after you've gotten married, it's just like you can't Listen, talk bad. And now it's even, just... even Samantha agrees that a wedding in the traditional sense, including how we did it, is a waste of money. I mean, yeah. If if it wasn't a, I think, societal norm, mm-hmm. I think there's a bunch of us that would just be like, all right, we're married now. Yeah. That's Which, that. We'll see you later. Who gives a shit? Woo! I said on previous podcasts, so I'll just say it real quick. You can throw an epic party, get, you know, fancy, and still save tens of thousands of dollars. You could literally get married for the, what is the marriage license? $75 in New York, maybe? Couldn't tell you because it was that cheap. It was, okay. So and the say, cost, when you took the wedding license compared to the cost of everything else, it was like, I, yeah, I'll pay that. That's no problem. Yeah. So say you get the license and you're just like, all right, we're just not even going to bother with the ceremony. We'll just have like a party or something. You could probably still get the same place and then just say it's a family gathering and ignore the idea that you got married so people don't jack up the prices on you. And... Just have a party at some place anyway, and it would all still be cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's only if you really didn't want to tolerate, like, hey, everybody just come hang out at the house, and let's just party here and whatever. Yeah. Which most people don't want to do, because nobody wants to deal with that cleanup afterwards, but. Anyways. Enough so, animal, so, animal, so Animal yeah. Crossing. Uh, I hate your weddings. I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I bought uh I did run into both those people. Mm-hmm. I ran into Leaf uh yesterday cuz the update update went live on Thursday. Uh so I ran into Leaf and I bought uh apparently you only get two shrubs or two of the types that there are. So I had two of them and I bought both of those and then I had our social media director running around to everybody else's islands and buying up 
uh, in the tent by tens, just a stack of 10 of like whatever we couldn't find. So I have a delivery to be made by her at some point to procure the rest of the ones that I did not have that day. What What's the point in collecting the shrubs, though? Just so I could have different ones around the island. Oh, okay. It, not because I was like, ooh, collect them. Yay. Like, yeah. <gasps> in case you guys are curious, that's how bad of a sneeze it was. Uh, so <laughs> I might cut that part out. The, uh, <laughs> the problem was I was just like, all right, I'm not going to go travel to 18 different people's islands right now. I've got I got stuff to do here. I have shrubs now. I have to start I, I gotta start planting. I gotta chop down trees. I have other things I need to do. And then she's like, Alright, I'm looking for some other ones. What do you have? And I was like, Oh, I have these. And she's like, Alright, open your island for with like a code or whatever so me and so and so can show up. They showed up. I told them that they needed to bring me X. They brought me what I requested. Then they left. <laughs> and then she went around and grabbed the rest of whatever we didn't have and now has it on her. So I have I have my order to be delivered his order from the the greenhouse yeah my order from the greenhouse is on its way and then i ran into red today uh who tried to initially sell me a painting for four hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars. i told him he was insane and he goes you're right you're basically like a family maybe a cousin cousin discount all right how about four thousand nine hundred and thirty dollars and i was like or four thousand three hundred ninety dollars or whatever I was like yes i'll do that <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right, cool. So I, I got one piece of art. So I wonder if you pay the original amount of money, do you get a different piece think, of I art? It, I don't think it would let you. Oh, if okay. I remember right, both my chat options were like, are you serious? Or just like WHA and then no T and then like a lot of question marks and exclamation points. Like, what? No. So I think it was no matter what, it was not going to let you play that because he's just going to try to upsell. I think the whole joke is he's going to try to upsell you. You say you're insane. And he goes, you're right. What if I gave you it at like 1% of the price? <laughs> it's like, oh, all right, well, that's fair. I'm sure there will be certain things that are actually. Yeah, like prices. worth it. Like, there's a crown in the game that's $1.2 million. But because of the turnip thing, you can make $1.2 million pretty easy. But it's just like there are things that do cost that much. So yeah. it's, it's possible. But yeah, that's that's been my extent of the update so far. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds lovely. Still working on you know, just making the island better. I don't get what the point of the game is. I'm assuming that's the point. Yeah, it is. That so. is the But I you can't for me, I can't go online. I can't go online and look at people's islands. Because then I'm just like, what am I doing? Because these people are just obviously nonstop playing and doing everything. And they're like, yeah, so I have this entire village planned out. And here's over here. And then I'm going to pick these things up and I'll put them over here. And I have a residential district. And that's where all the houses are. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what Yeah, but I just don't. Do you get like NPCs that come to your island? Like if you make it bigger and better, more will show up. I don't know if you make it bigger and better, but you can definitely have more. And then you can, you once you get to your max capacity, you could go find other ones and then you have to usually like replace one that's there so you have to like kick somebody off the island and it's this whole thing i guess but i haven't run into that problem i don't care to run into that problem i'm just like listen i have my island and you guys do your things and i'm gonna worry about me you're here because i let you be here that's this the, is that's, my island that's how the world should be you're right i should have an island we should all have an island and you know if you want to have a bronze statue of a goat, you know, that's, that's your thing. You can do that. I would have no problem if I had an Island, right. And I had a person on it that showed up every now and then that was like, Hey, any bugs you catch, I'll buy them from you. You get, you catch me a wasp. I'll pay you $5,000. And I'm like, motherfucker wants a wasp for $5,000. I'm going to get stung. I'll see you guys later. I'm catching this shit. I show up with a bundle of sticks that aren't even good sticks. They're just like what I don't want. I'm like, they're useless. Here, here's a bunch of sticks. You're like, I give you $800 for those. I'm like, <laughs> in this economy? <laughs> but it's, you know, it's not real. But if uh... I can reach that level of market, if the market crashes that far, 
where I can go get a bunch of sticks out of my yard and sell them to somebody for $800, I'm going to do it. I mean, you'd be stupid not to. Right. I'd go. I'd be constantly just digging holes in my yard. Anytime it looked like there might be a hole there, I'd dig a hole. Boom, fossil. <laughs> it's like it's it's free real estate. You know, I go. I walk out. I see a little glowing spot, like the sun's just shining down on one spot of my lawn. And I'm like, there's clearly a gold bag in there. Dig that up. Boom, thousand dollars. What? It's it's so easy. I don't understand why people are poor. Forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the life we live. This is why you don't equate Animal Crossing to real life. Also, the Nooks are a cult, but that's a different story. I'm pretty sure the the boys called their father our great and powerful leader or something like that. And I'm just like, all I could hear was the, the German music start playing. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, boy. I'm never putting a fountain on this island for heaven forbid you all turn it to Kool-Aid. We end up like that one family in South America. So off the uh, path about <laughs> suicide cults. I was just thinking about the one family in South America. <laughs> oh, the only family in South America. <laughs> Number two, Nintendo is disabling the ability to log into a Nintendo account through a Nintendo Network ID, or NNID, after 160,000 accounts were affected by hacking attempts. Nintendo says login IDs and passwords, quote, obtained illegally by some means other than our service, end quote, have been used since the beginning of April to gain access to other accounts. Nintendo, Nick, no, sorry. <laughs> Nicknames, date of birth, country, and email addresses may have been accessed during the breach, and some accounts ex- have experienced fraudulent purchases. I love the word fraudulent. I don't know why. It's just, it's a good word. It's a fun word. Fun to say. Yeah. Nintendo is now recommending that all users enable two-factor authentication, when they should have been recommending that from the beginning. Passwords are now being reset for affected accounts, and Nintendo is disabling the ability to log into a main Nintendo account through an NNID. These older NNIDs were used for 3DS and Wii U devices. Nintendo's latest Switch console uses a newer Nintendo account system, which until today could be linked to these older accounts. Well, that sucks. Yeah, that does I suck. I wasn't affected, but... Two-factor everything. Have strong passwords. Having boring passwords will lead to problems. Password one is not an exciting password. P at sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, W0RD. Also not good. <laughs> Here's the issue, though. You're supposed to have a unique original password for every account. Correct. Like, that's the... That would be your in true ideal. ideal environment, and I know people don't do it. Yeah, which is my problem, because you can't... It's not realistic, unless you use a password manager, which I, was, I feel I like... I about to just tell you Which I feel that. like, in itself, is... I don't get the idea of a password password manager. Oh, don't, like, don't make me go down this tunnel of explaining a great password manager to you. I don't understand. All right. So if you're worried about people getting your password, why would you put them all in one spot? It's it. I understand that, but it's the, it's the encrypted like vault and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So it comes to, you know, one password and then all these encrypted things are over there. Yes. It's the whole idea of like a token encryption. Right. But it's just, it's the way that like for a lot of things, I can't tell you my password. <laughs> Because you don't know it. I don't know it. Yeah. I know I, it I get the idea like of it. Because like look at it, but I don't know it. Like, when mm-hmm. you guys come over, and I haven't had to change, like, the... What is it called? What do they call it? Is it blockchain encryption? Is well, there's called? blockchain. There is blockchain encryption. This isn't that. Um, it's like, when you come over, and you try to get on my Wi-Fi for the first time, mm-hmm. and you're like, all right, so what's your password? And I'm like, I have no idea. I was like, I here, this is what it is, and I have to, like, show you it. Mm-hmm. From the password manager because I'm like, I'm not reading that to you because it's 16 characters long. And also, it makes zero sense to read to you. So, good luck. It's just the moral. It's not a moral. It's like, it's, I, I get you're moving where, the weak link in the chain. Right. So, what happens, you know, if for whatever reason you lose access to that or, 
You know, whatever the case may be. Yeah, I mean, you can usually still get into those accounts regardless. You know, do a password reset and blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. But that's where it's like, password manager is a good step. Mm-hmm. But it's not your solution. It is password manager. It is if you can enable two-factor authentication, you constantly have that enabled. Yeah. And then you run backups everywhere. It's just, it's what you need to do. And it's what people used to do, which was ter- terrible, of... I'm going to take this notepad and write down all my accounts on this notepad. And then I'm going to put that notepad right next to my computer. And you're just like, well, now that's the safest. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, in theory, that's funny, that will, yeah, that will now eventually that's... become the safest because once again, now you go back to nobody mm-hmm. uses physical means. So that's where the yeah. safe becomes, but it's, it's, <laughs> It's like that's where it used to be because it was like, oh well, if somebody gets that piece of paper, everything's over. It's like, yeah, that's true. But now, same thing. If they, they, go, they go in the cloud and they get that all that stuff, it's the same problem. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, why not just next to the safe, write the code? Yeah. Huh. I wonder what the code to this safe is. Man, I see these. Pic- he really likes these pictures of twenty three, seventeen, and five. Oh. It's clearly seventeen five twenty three. All right, hold on. Like, no, <laughs> like you don't write down. There's a glorious. I don't know if you've ever seen this one. It might be on tech support, like problems or security problems or whatever the subreddit is, where the company changed their pin door pin combo to get inside, and it wasn't like you needed a badge plus your combo. It was just a generic combo for everybody, and. They put a sticky note above it that says new combo is blank, and they just wrote the combo. And people, I'm like, what? <laughs> Why would you ever do that? Uh. It's like, no, it's like, hey, door changed. Call HR if you need the combo. Like, yeah. that's what it should be. But no, it's not. It's, hey, new combo is one, two, three, four. It's like, oh, I would lose my mind. Lose my mind. Anyway, shall we move on? I and suppose. Secure your accounts because it's only going to get worse. This is why I'm I'm resigning also, you, myself. You specifically secure your accounts. I watch you get hacked more than enough. Yeah, but here's the issue, though. It's Luckily, it's not stuff you use for the most part that I know. That's about. the problem. Well, except for is the, It's gotten to the point like I'm not the type of person who wants to fucking deal with this stuff all the time. So I'm just like, I don't need a Twitter account. I don't need a Facebook account. Well, I don't need an Instagram account. For, I don't need it. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's for those things. That's all fine. Like I like the Twitter one's the one that I personally witnessed happen because your account randomly woke up at one o'clock and, te- and tweeted me, and I was yeah. like, "Matt's not awake, and he's definitely not using Twitter if he is." Uh, but when you had I was at Netflix and everything else beforehand, mm-hmm. I was just like, hey, "That's a problem." But hey, we all have to have it happen at some point. We've been through this though. You've been through it. On a different level, because I can't win. Like, I do the two-factor thing, and something will happen, and I'll lose access to my phone. Which, that's it. Oh, yeah. Like, that's it. Like, if I don't have access to my phone, my two-factor authentication's, like, out the window. Like... Yeah. So, which is the Pokemon Go thing. I don't know if you remember that. We were playing Pokemon Go, and then, like, I lost access to, like something fucked up and I didn't have the Google authenticator on this phone and it turned in, but I couldn't add it to this phone because I didn't, the password got reset or something. Oh, like yeah. it turned into a whole shit show and I had to go, I had to walk all the way back to my house to get access I, to my computer. When I transferred my, from my old phone to my new one, mm-hmm. I had, I was using Google authenticator for a lot of things and I switched over and I was like, I'm not doing this again. So I have Authy for other things. Mm-hmm. And then I took all my ones out of Google Authenticator and put them all in Authy. So now when I just signed into my Authy account, there's all my two factors. So I don't have to do the unlink and relink and unlink and relink that I was doing on Google Authenticator. But the, anyway, yeah. we can have an entire security discussion after this. We won't, but we could. It's official. Yay! Oh, there, there will be no new WWE... 2K game this year. The news was revealed during a call to investors, according to Kotaku. Oh. Boo! That's it. Premature celebration. Premature. But, uh, yeah. I mean, we saw that coming. Yeah, that was was more of a follow-up. Yeah, it's basically all confirmed from what we talked about it the first time. And, I mean, it sucks, but it sucks for just that sport. It'd be like, 
it's the if Madden goes away, you're hoping that something steps up to take that place. So I am hoping there's another wrestling game that comes out because people do enjoy them. But this last one was so bad that I don't know if they were going to really be able to recover quick enough. Hmm. That doesn't need to be a yearly game either. No, I don't think think any sports game technically needs to be a yearly game, but that's a different discussion. Number four, the mid-season at Invitational, the international tournament that marks the halfway point in the League of Legends competitive season, will not be held in 2020. Riot Games announced the tournament's cancellation on Thursday morning, citing public health concerns regarding the novel coronavirus pandemic. And makes, another one bites the dust. That makes sense. I mean, usually the MSI was an international tournament one. So you'd have all those teams plus staff plus everything else traveling all to congregate in wherever. Could have been Tokyo. I don't know where it was supposed to be this year, but all go there. They all have that giant tournament with all fans and everything. So it's like, yeah, obviously that's not going to happen. No and, surprise. And doing an international tournament is a lot harder than doing their... Uh, their leagues like just doing the north american lcs all those teams are already in la so them all playing on the tournament realms in la like potentially just blocks away or a few miles away isn't going to really have that bad of a uh, ping or latency problem but trying to do that with like all right there's one team in la the other teams in tokyo the other teams in australia like it it would be so hard and and potentially per- terrible to do that you don't want to do that during an esport type thing yeah logistical nightmare that i'm happy i'm not a part of the pc version of hideo kojima's death stranding has been delayed due to the coronavirus pandemic 505 games which picked up the pc publishing rights to the formerly playstation exclusive announced via twitter that the game will be released on july 14th it was originally due on june 2nd I mean, sucks, but... Sucks, but... Suck it! No, No, just kidding. Can't say we didn't see it coming. Yeah, everything is going to be delayed. Yeah. And we'll just keep you up to date as more things get delayed. Speaking of potential things, number six, Seattle-based gaming convention PAX West will still take place during Labor Day weekend. Organizers announced Tuesday the event is planned for September 4th to the 7th, with more information to come on batches and hotel registrations. We'll see about that. We'll see. I mean, it's the <clears throat> that's starting to reach the window of when a, a lot of people are saying there's a chance you could be back to normal-ish, but I still don't know about a giant gathering like that. Yeah, I have doubts. I Even mean, in theory, like, going to PAX East was in the range of, like, might be a bad decision, so. um, Yeah, I mean, I guess it, yeah, we'll see. We'll see, because we'll I'm, I'm assuming we're going to get that whole traditional pandemic route of the second wave if we don't. I like I like the idea of a traditional pandemic route. Yeah, you know, traditional pandemic route where there's you know, multiple this waves your, of this infection. Is your, standard, your standard pandemic, okay, you know, see, so we're going to have everybody going to kind of go back and then like, I don't know, like two weeks, two weeks maybe, and everybody's going to get it again and we all have to go back home. Basically. It's honestly... It's gonna. It's because of what's gonna happen is everybody's gonna go. We're back to being We're normal. Free. <laughs> we give zero fucks anymore, and mm-hmm. they immediately go back to doing everything they're not supposed to do, mm-hmm. and ruin it for everyone. Yep. Former Kotaku news editor Jason Schreier has joined the team at Bloomberg News. What? Where he will continue to report on the games industry. Speaking to GameIndustry.biz, Schreier said that he will be joining the technology reporting team at Bloomberg. He will have some flexibility in defining his role, he said, but the games industry will continue to be his focus. Focus, 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 focus. I mean, hey. <clears throat> More resources, maybe? I don't know. I don't know how, how Kotaku, like how big, you know, how much. I mean, I don't know. It might be a more resources thing, but it also, based on things that came out and whatever, I think he was just done not with Kotaku themselves, but with their, maybe themselves, but like their the owners management. and management and uh, what is it, G&O Media or whoever now mm-hmm. currently owns them and, and all of their garbageness that's been going on. Like they've 
that group has lost a bunch of people that have been big names and stuff like that that have mm-hmm. left and been like, we can't <clears throat> work in this scenario. But and in in the grand scheme of things, that's a big win for Bloomberg because it's uh, a giant win for Bloomberg. Clearly, video games are not going anywhere. Uh, esports is taking the role of traditional esports as a whole is stepping up and replacing physical sports because they can't yeah as much as they can yeah yeah so you know to to have a name like jason schreier who is basically the go-to for big stories the go-to for the words video game journalism always just pain me as a whole but when video game journalism and then just journalism as a whole get brought up jason schreier is the first name that i can think of he's the he's the one i know by name yeah one of the only, really, like, yeah. who's still a journalist. I know sports people by name, but I go to them for sports. And when I go, like, oh, what's an actual deep dive on these really large think pieces? We've talked of his articles done on, like, the Rockstar Crunch and everything like that. I believe Jason is is blacklisted by Bethesda, <laughs> doing mm-hmm. the Kotaku being blacklisted by Bethesda. I don't know if that stays with when Jason's gone because it was a story that he broke about, like, things being in the game before the game came out. Uh, but it's just like, he has been the focal point or not the focal point. He isn't the focal point, but he is the one that tells some of the biggest stories in the best way. So I'm happy he's still going to be doing that no matter where it is. Yeah. I'm hoping with Bloomberg, he might have more clout, a little bit more money resources. We'll see. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. Speaking of the esports angle, Number eight, England's Premier League is making a return of sorts with a week-long FIFA tournament that will air on NBC. Officially called the E-Premier League Invitational Tournament, the event began on April 21st and features representatives from all 20 teams competing in a single elimination. You dying. Oh, hiccup. Single elimination tournament. The league says that all prize money from the tournament will be donated to the National Health Service All matches will be streamed on NBCSports.com, the Premier League's site and social channels, as well as Sky Sports Twitch and YouTube pages. Sky Sports has a Twitch page? The semifinals and finals will also air on NBC Sports Network in in the U.S. and Sky Sports Main Event and Sky Sports Premier League in the U.K. They got a lot of channels, man. Yeah, that that is a lot of channels, but hey, another, like... Let's. I. I think they're. I think it's a two on two tournament. Yeah. Where they're pairing a esports player with a pro player from the club, <clears throat> which I think is very interesting. I don't. Did we talk about this already? That was a different one, I think. Okay. Might have been the MLS one. Yeah, that was MLS. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so maybe they aren't doing that, but. I don't remember. It's I, I can't remember. If exactly you remember my speech from last time, two on two. If it is two on two, it's much harder. <laughs> Either way, I'm always I'm intrigued. Like I've been watching a lot of the uh, the players' league for the show, and sometimes on the weekends I catch the F1 races. Mm-hmm. I've caught some of the like NASCAR clips. Usually, I don't, I'm getting fired. I don't for being really. Racist, but I'd like to watch the four F1 races, but I don't because they're not as well organized as I would I just, want I them to be. I don't watch the whole thing. Yeah. I usually jump in and I watch maybe like a little bit of it, like mm-hmm. some laps or something of the actual race, none of the qualifying or anything, just to kind of see like if there's anything crazy happening or... Yeah. Uh, and it's not like a lot of the drivers are still divided on it, which I think is a thing that, you know, yeah. it's just growing pains. So, But like the... MLB The Show League is pretty funny because the game, I've talked about this before, but watching the players freak out over like game problems are great. Uh, but then you see some of the younger guys, even some of the older guys, but some of the younger guys are just dominating a lot of the stats they're pulling out for players. are like, he's, because they're playing with their own team, he's like, he's hit 14 home runs with himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's just weird little stats like that and stuff. and. Some of the player personalities are pretty nice to put in front of a camera and, and make them more personable. To it'd be fun if they kept like the video game angle going and like say for example, um, uh, baseball. Like if while they were doing the home run derby, they did a a digital home a run digital derby. home run derby at the same time. That was like yeah, 
they were just running back and forth like <laughs> or they or if they, i would say like because your home run derby usually takes place later in the day anyway mm-hmm. just do it during like the afternoon yeah like yeah we're gonna have this mlb the show whole thing because usually the mlb the show does something around all-star week weekend anyway whether it's guest appearances on streams or games or whatever it's like screw it have a home run derby, and i think they might have done this in the past so i might not be saying anything too crazy but have a home run derby with either the same contestants or different contestants or people from last year you know whoever wants to do it just have, have a home run derby in the game who cares yeah the source code for both Team Fortress 2 and Counter-Strike Global Offensive has been leaked online. A tweet from the official CSGO Twitter account says that the leaked code was a reposting of engine code from late 2017 that had been leaked back in 2018. Uh, though Valve says it has, quote, not found any reason for players to be alarmed or avoid, avoid the current builds, end quote. There have been concerns from various community-run servers that the code reveals a security vulnerability that could allow for remote code execution through either game, and Valve recommends only playing on official servers. Interesting. Just play on official servers, people. Yeah. Stop fucking around. (laughs) Quit being so sneaky. Stop trying to have fun. Yeah, hey, we don't do that here, all right? Number 10. Riot Games is offering hefty rewards to players who help identify potential exploits, cheats, and other security concerns in its upcoming arena shooter, Valorant. The company called on players using its Vanguard anti-cheat software to report on any issues they find. Riot promises a minimum reward of $250 for the identification of a new security issue for it to fix, but also offers a maximum bounty of $100,000 for the most severe threats. Valorant's Vanguard anti-cheat software has been met with disdain from the more vocal gaming communities. The complaints about the software center around how invasive it is. Vanguard boots every time a computer starts, is continuously active on the computer, and has permissions equivalent to that of an administrator. A little invasive. A little bit. You know, you can only start when maybe the game starts. Hey now. Hey now. We gotta stop you from cheating. I'm not playing your game. <laughs> but your PC might be a cheater PC. You, 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 you don't you dare label my PC. You keep my PC out of this. Are you assuming my PC's ge- gender? You assuming, yeah. <laughs> cheater, non-cheater. <laughs> Are those the two PC genders? Uh, yeah. You think a... it's going to, you think it's the, I don't know. What do you think? You care? I, it's interesting. Do you think I mean, it's bug bounties I, are always funny? Yeah, bug they're bounties are interesting. But always interesting to me. I'm curious if it's gonna like if this is gonna blow under the radar, like you know, fly under the the rug here, or however those sayings go. You usually get swept under a rug. Swept under the rug. Fly over uh, the radar. Fly, fly, fly under you, the radar. Fly under the radar. Swept under the rug. Swept under the rug. Uh, or if it's going to you know hurt Valorant in some regard. I doubt it because I mean they're technically still in beta and everything, so it's yeah. And and doing a bug bounty is the right way to do it instead of coming out and like trying to ban players and everything. It's just a matter of who who finds the cheat and then doesn't say anything and keeps cheating with it because then you have a problem. That was kind of part of the conversation with the communities was because of how invasive the software is. There was the whole discussion of like you know how are they going to use the software? Are they going to immediately? ban people they find cheating or are they going to let them continue to cheat for a while so that they can fix it gain more data on the on the issue i would Uh, probably end up letting it go for like it's kind of a three strike rule mm -hmm. three match rule of like all right you did it you did it again all right third time you're done and then hopefully have enough data and a three-time rule to go like okay i know what happened Mm -hmm. speaking of cheating oh hey Infinity Ward has announced additional measures to curb cheating in the latest Call of Duty, including Warzone. According to their Twitter account, starting this week, players who report suspected cheaters will receive confirmation in-game when a player is banned. Uh, They've also added more security security updates and increased resources dedicated to back-end enforcement teams. Matchmaking has been updated to match suspected cheaters together. And a, quote, report a player feature was com- is coming soon to kill cam and spectate modes. I like those. Yeah. That's cool. It's, it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. 
I like the idea of just putting cheaters with other cheaters. I like that idea too. That's just funny to mm-hmm. me of like, you all go play on your own island. Stupid island. Well, like cheaters banned, obviously. I like the idea of putting suspected cheaters together because it's like a quarantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, like eh, we don't know about you. And we're not sure. And then when you find out that you're in a lobby of cheaters, will you cheat to get out? Oh. <laughs> it's like they've created a gulag for cheaters. Yeah, yeah. Their <laughs> own, the cheaters gulag is their own gulag. Yeah. It's the, uh, it's the cave in Dark Knight the pit oh yeah, yeah that he's in and has to climb out of and everything mm-hmm. you get everybody just chanting for that one guy that they know hasn't cheated Ooh, da, da. <laughs> number 12 brings us to a rumor mill lots of rumors this week and apparently to my delight yeah your delight one of the rumors is delightful the, to me, apparently, it's the first one. There may be more Crisis remasters in the works, according to Saber Interactive CEO. Saber is co-developing Crisis Remastered. I want more. Yeah. I said it from the start. Give me all three. Yeah, he just made some elusive tweets, basically like, oh, if you like this, you might like some other crisis-related stuff we're working on or some shit like that. Like, Ooh, you know, the also, obvious... Which also leads to a potential crisis. Fight. He's he's planting... He's wide net. Yeah, yeah. Wide net. Yeah. Watch Dogs Legion is a next-gen launch title. This is somewhat confirmed by the CEO of Ubisoft in a New York Times interview. He said that Ubisoft is willing to make further delays if it's best for their partners. Okay. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. At this point, like, well, okay, cool. At why this not? Point people might have forgot the game's coming out. Not gonna lie, I did. Ubisoft's in kind of a weird place. They delayed literally all their games. They, and it's well, like, not only have they delayed, but they're also in a spot where I'm like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. So, like, if the games do come out and they're flops, ugh. if they come out and they're home runs, all okay. right, all right, you, yeah, you justified you know, yourself. Fair, fair play. Uh, next, an industry insider is claiming that next month, Sony will announce a Silent Hill reboot for PS5. Hmm. This one's kind of, kind of stewing for a while. It's weird if Sony announces it. And when it's and if it's a Silent Hill reboot, is it Konami? And you, well, the, the, a couple you know. of weeks back, we got the rumor that Sony wanted to was like saying, let me buy these franchises. Right. But then we were told they were denied. Yeah. So, yeah. Is it Konami just being like, we'll do it? But you keep that Kojima away from this. <laughs> That'd be really funny. What if they announce and it's 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 uh, what's his studio called? The new one, the new Kojima studio. Kojima studio. What if it's them doing it? I can picture the logo, but is it just Kojima Studios? No. I mean, the time they're not. I they mean, they're, the ti- they're not doing. As far as we know, they're not doing they, anything. I mean, they could be. I mean, they, well, they could be doing this, but yeah, I think that would once again require that story to have been we bought the license. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to the next rumors. Horizon Zero Dawn sequel rumors. Development has moved to PS5. Sony greenlit the IP to be a trilogy. It's offering co-op, and it should be significantly larger. Yeah, Thoughts. That- the details on it was basically from the start, Guerrilla Games wanted these things for, for the original okay. Horizon Zero Dawn from the beginning. They wanted a trilogy. They wanted to have co-op in it. And Sony was like, hey, settle down. Settle down. We don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. So they made one game. Obviously, it went well. Yep. And then this is now the rumor. The, the rumors from some people are saying, Sony's like, yeah, you can do those things now. The co-op would be interesting because it was a very good single-player game. Mm-hmm. I mean, co-op might just make it easier for like taking down the big guys and stuff like that. But I'm trying to think of like where co-op would have really benefited in the first game. The only way I could see it is if they start to like angle towards Monster Hunter territory. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, I could see that. Mm-hmm. Which also, I mean, it also completely depends on what the story they're trying to tell in two is. I'm like really torn by this because I'm all about cooperative games like i love the idea of co-op and i loved horizon zero dawn but then again i loved horizon zero dawn and this is like would seriously have the potential to fuck with 
with the formula. So, right. Let's continue into more rumors. A leaker said that GTA 6 has been in development since 2014 and will feature a larger map. Whatever that means. Why is this on the list, Matt? I don't know. It's on there. Okay, cool. Good news. GTA 7 is going to be starting development literally right after GTA 6 comes out. So if that means anything to any of you... I don't know, dude. It's on there. That's what people are saying. I don't know why they're saying it. I'm just telling you what other people are saying. Oh, it's going to feature a larger map? Oh, man. who? We all know what's happening. Who, who would have thought it's going to feature a larger map when literally they've just gotten bigger They've just bigger gotten bigger. bigger. I know. I don't know why people are talking about Because they're basically... This is their way of saying to Rockstar, we want that game. Give us the game. So Rockstar's like, oh, I guess, you know... Are they still spending money on GTA 5? LA Noir. Yeah, they are. LA Noir well, then 2. fuck them then. <laughs> LA Noir 2. Signed off. The main domains for the Prince of Persia games have been updated by Ubisoft, reigniting rumors of a possible sequel or remaster. Do we get Jake Gyllenhaal? I mean, he is sexy. I don't disagree. Jason Schreier said that Call of Duty is still happening this year, and he believes it's the COD. Well, so, it's the Cold War Vietnam era, but not a remaster. Interesting. Yeah. Now we've gone too far into modern and space. We got to go all the way back again. We got to yeah. reset. Retread. We're yeah. retreading. I love how. So we got we got we got Call of Duty, which yep. is not a remaster. It's a reboot, right? Yeah, to them it would be a, a reboot or a reimagining. So what was the? There was a Vietnam War one, right? Was that World at War? No, that was World War Two. Black II. Ops. Black Ops. World and that, at War was World War Two. Okay, so Black Ops. We're gonna get a Black Ops reboot. No, so it's we're, we're gonna go. We're gonna go back to World at War. You think it's gonna be World at War? Yeah, because after World it was, Warfare was is World, World at War. War. Interesting. Black Ops comes in two more cycles. <laughs> <laughs> what dude if the, if it if it comes out and that's the case i'm gonna be just like flip a table and be like i'm fucking done with you people like <laughs> i just i want the the it's one of my favorite every time you just see the stick man just arms down and just kind of looks down at the table and then just arms up <laughs> table in the air just i've had enough of this i don't know but yeah that's that's the news that's the news, folks. That's the news. That's the new releases. And then the, the Looney Tunes thing swoops in. Dude, if we could get that for outro music, that would be <laughs> fire. You know, you know how bad that's copyrighted. Baby, 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 Foghorn Leghorn reference on Reddit uh, like last week, and it like it legit made my day because oh, I was like, say. <laughs> that was it was like I'll say I'll say, and it was like went on to, to like you know some punchline because that was completely unrelated, but it like worked, and I was like, God damn, people still know who Foghorn Leghorn is. Good for them. There's so many of just like Foghorn, God, Pappy Le Pew, Pappy Le Pew, little girl, <laughs> love at first sight, no. <laughs> uh, oh, that poor cat that. that poor cat that always got painted like a skunk yeah man that's rapey man that that was a rapey cartoon i thought i taught a putty cat i did i did i did see a putty cat good shit uh i'll say <laughs> <laughs> oh man Duck season, rabbit season, duck season, rabbit season. We're going to be here all night doing that now. What do you got? Yeah, you got that's, all, yeah that's all. I mean, you I could do a Tasmanian devil, but it's not the... Ah, it's just going to get messy. We got deals to talk about? No, nah, there's no deals. It's more just like, you know, it's been seven days since we've seen each other. And I'm just curious of what you've been doing. Um, Shifty eyes. <laughs> I... Just the good old stare. Just I haven't been doing. Shocking, folks. As you can see, Matt is in the first set and is still not doing shit. Yeah, so that's life. Um, I mean, other than the games that we played, the game that we played together. Uh, oh wait, I did play Totally Reliable Delivery Service. That you did with uh, the old ball and chain. <laughs> oh, get it? It's like marriage jokes. So a callback in the beginning. 
I did success. What, what what I was more excited about was I successfully paired my PS4 controller with my PC Bluetooth. We're in the future, folks. I, you know what? Just yeah, I was pretty pretty thrilled about that. Um, we we played. Uh, I fucking hate that game. <laughs> hate it. <laughs> It makes me so angry because like you know how humans fall flat like it's the controls are like numb and goofy and drunk but well, you can still do things they're they're numb and goofy and drunk but yeah you can still you can still like do things yeah, yeah yeah this game's like your character fucking limps when you walk like he just does this weird like vibrating shit while you're walking and you can't go anywhere <laughs> and you randomly get hung up on shit like like i kept getting i every time i try to jump out of a car it would like suck me back in and like that just kept happening. Like that was just the thing. I had I had clipping problems. I can't remember what vehicle I was in, but I was just like, "That's it. I will. I am destined to get out of this." <laughs> yeah, like just that. Like cl- yeah, I guess clipping problems, like weird yeah. stuff like that, was constantly happening. And like I was just, it it just was so. It it wasn't objectively. It wasn't like horrendous. Okay, but it was. Uh, it was annoying me at that point where I just was losing my fucking mind. <laughs> you were in there for a while too. Oh yeah, we played for a long time. And at first, I was like, "We're gonna get shit done. We're gonna we're gonna deliver some packages." And then, once I discovered how just her, like just terrible it was to try to like actually do things with precision. I just gave up and just started exploring and running around and, you know, messing with the the vehicles and stuff like that. Yeah, so I played that and that was about it. Um, we played Dead War, Zombie, Zombie Army Dead War um, a little bit and that, that's moving along. I actually hopped in again today and played a level because there's that we are at like a level gap. I think you're like four or five levels ahead of me. So I closed that to one or two levels. Um and that's that's about all I've done. Um, I downloaded Bioware's Jade Empire to try to give that a shot again and get through it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really have any plans. I don't have any plans for games. Well, I'll go back to saying what I said at the end of last week, and then we just didn't do it. And I tried to text you in the middle of the week. I have yeah. some things. Maybe they'll spark an interest in you. I think a couple of you might have already played, so maybe not. Mm. We'll, we'll see. Uh, yeah. Playing play Dead War, man. We are in hell. We are in hell. We are officially in hell. We are on the final level. Time to kill Hitler. Again. Kill Hitler. Zombie Hitler. Sure. I, it seems like a short game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a little short. I feel like if we weren't playing on a... Because we're just playing on normal, diff, you know, medium difficulty, which is the normal setting and mm-hmm. normal zombies and everything like that. I feel like if we turned it up, everything would start taking longer. But even then, it being a short game, we're when we do a level, a level's maybe an hour to an hour and a half for us. Yeah. Towards the end, it's gotten that we were hitting those weird, quicker sections where we're like, mm. there was one room and the horde was one large man. So, like, there, there were a couple times where I was like... I don't understand why this was hectic, why this was mm-hmm. here and not in the beginning where the beginning of there's times where you're like, I got to run through this whole level. I kind of want to play it on harder difficulties because like when I went back and played to get today, I went, I went through the first level again, all uh-huh. three, all three safe rooms on the first, first chapter. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of sped through it obviously. Um, but I changed up my kit a little bit. Like I went to the Thompson and I was playing with the Thompson, and I was like, oh, like, there's different guns in this game. Duh. And it would be interesting to do that and streamline, like, a build to play at higher difficulties. Because, like, the Thompson's the healing one with the divine ammo. Um, and I was just kind of fucking around like that. So, I don't know. Maybe that's something to investigate. I don't know. The... Uh... The Thompson, I think, is actually pretty fun after uh, playing with it towards our our final hoorah, as mm-hmm. you would say. Uh, it's been it's been a uh, solid 
let's sit down and just murder zombies. It only got hectic in that one room. I mean, we've only had maybe like two minutes or two sections where we're like, all right, well, time to focus up a little bit because I have three large men running at me and I only mm-hmm. have so many panzer shots. <laughs> yeah, we should try a uh, horde mode as well. I played that for a little bit and I almost made it through an entire thing by myself. We should we should do it. We should turn it up. Yeah, because I, I, I had a pretty easy time on regular difficulty in horde mode by myself. So, yeah. And it, it kind of forces you to use all the different weapons and think a little bit like with the mines and the tripwires and stuff, but which we've not had to do at all. No, we walk into a room and we're like, all right, so I have mines and trip mines. Where are my grenades? I don't want these anymore. I'm going to put these just somewhere that yeah. I don't even know if it's going to matter. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm down, I'm down to, you know, kill zombies, murder the zombies. Yeah. But first I want to murder Hitler and then do as we need. Yeah, I mean Hitler. You always got to shoot him in the balls. Yeah, if 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 we get the chance, I'm doing it. I I fear it might be a headshot, but oh, it might be a headshot. Hey, oh, genitalia joke. Uh, yeah, no, it's been it's been a week. Yeah, yeah, that's it. MLB Wow. MLB Normal. Wow. Zombie Army, well, classic and retail. Wow, uh, Animal Crossing work. Watched. Did I mention that I watched JoJo Rabbit last week? I did watch JoJo you, Rabbit. You didn't? I think. Yeah. yeah. I might have off mentioned it, but not on here. Yeah. I did watch JoJo Rabbit this week. I watched. Oh, I watched a movie. I don't remember. I watched Knives Out. Oh, how was that? Knives Out was pretty good. I, I heard know. it was really good. I heard they're doing sequel. Yeah, they, I, that's what I heard too. Uh, I enjoyed it. It was pretty good. It was, we we watched something today too. We did. We watched. <laughs> we watched uh, Timothy Dalton's James Bond in a uh, Living Daylight. Living Daylights. Living Daylights, maybe. Yeah. Nineteen eighty-seven. It was Bond. fun. It was, it was a fun movie. It was a fun movie to to sit down and watch for us. I mean, don't don't sit down. You know, expecting it to be some. No, expect it to you be know, a stereotypical. Eighty, early. it's and it, like this is the part that blows my mind about it is I don't ever recall watching an eighties James Bond, and it's probably because Timothy Dalton James Bond. He yeah. was James Bond through the eighties. They are eighties Bond movies. They are they are very eighties yeah. Bond movies, and they're also very stereotypical Bond movies. Mm-hmm. It's a good combo. Yeah, it's it was a solid like hey. Let's grab some pizza and just watch this James Bond movie. Yeah. And then it turns out that Matt was like, this is Uncharted 3. And so. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's wicked funny. Um, but yeah, it was a, that was a good movie. Uh, we caught up on another episode of Hunters. And mm-hmm. it was on Nazi killing again. It's just like a theme, apparently. Yes. It's, it's uh, our jam. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the... Lego Masters is finished. I've watched all of that, and the season finale did happen. Solid show. I don't think it's anything too special, but it was it was pretty cool to see. Uh, and still watching Westworld, keeping up to date on that, and watching devs as well, working on watching that. So, watching things, doing things. What it nice. be? What it do? Nice. So, yeah. That's all I got. I got nothing. Then it sounds like we're done. And in roughly seven days, you'll hear from us again. Bye-bye.